Hello, and welcome back to segment number two, talking about accessing the windows of heaven, how to reap the benefits of tithing. Now, if you recall, in our first segment, we talked about one of the introductory points of tithing when it was actually introduced in the Bible. We talked about Jacob at the Rock of Bethel. We talked about the story where he had actually used the reeds in front of the cattle and the animals to influence how they would bear young. And it also influenced uh, how the cattle and the, and the animals increase under Jacob's watch, which gave him a larger pool of animals in the long run. And we talked about where that idea came from. We said that tithing is a response to an awareness that God is reaching into your life, that he not only wants to connect with you, but he wants to connect with your heart and your mind. And he uses the means of our cash flow, of our money to do that. Well, in this next segment, we're going to be talking about the nine purposes of the tithe. I'm going to try to get through them fairly quickly because we've got a lot of information here. And I know we can't get into all of the details uh, in, in, to, in depth about all of them, but I am going to try to touch on all nine in this one segment. Again, we're talking about accessing the windows of heaven. We said that this book is important, and I'm starting with this book because we're getting ready to launch the next wave of books as they relate to wealth and income and money. The next wave is called Wicked Wealth, the Wealth Transfer Series. Now, we've heard that scripture many, many times in the book of Proverbs where it says, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Well, here's the question. If the wealth is laid up, the wealth of the sinner is laid up or it's set aside or it is in waiting or in a holding pattern with the sinner and it's laid up for those who are righteous, how does it get from there where they are to here where we are? Well, that's what Wicked Wealth, the Wealth Transfer Series, is all about. In fact, I actually finished a book two years ago, but I wasn't released uh, the spirit. God just didn't give me the heart or the mind to release it. And then later I understood why, because there's so much material and there's so much information. It was too much for one volume. So we actually broke it up into smaller, more digestible pieces. And literally there are over 40 different ways in the word of God and in the natural realm that God uses to transfer wealth from one realm to the next, or from one generation to the next, or from location to the next. And so in that series, Wicked Wealth, the Wealth Transfer Series, we identify over 40 of those different ways and how with that insight and revelation, you can recognize when God is trying to use one of those strategies for you. Having said that, let's go on in, accessing the windows of heaven, the nine purposes of the tithe. Now, I love this particular session, section of this book because no one had ever shared this with me. I don't, I don't know. I had never heard it when, when um, God first started teaching these components or this insight to me. The first part talks about in Malachi chapter 3, starting around verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. I am the Lord, I do not change. That is why your, your descendants of Jacob's are not already completely destroyed. Verse 7 goes on to say, Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return. Now, that word return there is an absolute instruction. It is a pause between God giving a descriptive narrative of the state of things. He now gives a single word instruction about what to do about it to correct it. He says return. To return means to turn and go backwards. And then he goes on in verse 8. He says, will a man rob God? Yes, you've robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, God responds. Now, up until that point, I had read this passage most of my Christian life. In fact, I'm a PK, a preacher's kid, grew up in the church, spent my whole life. I was one of the babies on the pew that fell asleep. Well, that was me. So I heard my whole life, and I'd always assumed that when God says you're cursed with a curse, he, say, he was saying, if you don't bring your tithes, then I'm going to break down the transmission on your car. It's a punishment. But as I study this word, the word curse, what it actually means is an acquisition of a state. 
It means the acquisition of a mindset or a way of thinking or attitude that causes me or causes my life to come under the influence of a certain state of affairs. So it goes on to say, you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now the word again, to curse means to lay under. Note it did not say God curses anybody. It says you come under a state where your thinking, your attitudes, your thought processes are influenced in such a way as to they limit your ability to hear God, to connect with the heart of God. So a lot of things God is endeavoring to get from his realm into your life, you can't see it. We'll talk more about that later. So it goes on, it says, as a result of this departure from God, those attitudes, the mindsets, and the behaviors caused the children of Israel to come to live under a cursed state. Now, keep a note here because this is a critical piece of information that we're going to need to come back to later. Now, let's look at those nine purposes. When you start talking about when you God says tithe, why? What's number one? If you look at Malachi 3.10, it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. So we see the first purpose of the tithe is to provide for the Father's house. God is saying, look, there are things that have to happen in the earth realm as it relates to my house, my kingdom, and what matters to me. And the first thing I want you to do, or the first purpose of the tithe, is to provide for the house. <clears throat> to provide for the house of God. So the number one purpose of tithing is what? To provide for the house of God. Let's look at number two. It goes on to say, um, it says, For I, if you will bring your tithes into the storehouse that there may, may be meat in my house, then he says, prove me with this act. With that act, you're going to prove me. He says, if I will not open the windows of heaven. Now, I love that phrase. Because windows, not as in windows of heaven over here, but windows as in windows, glass plated windows that I look through. Well, what do windows give you? So when God says, I'm going to open the windows of heaven, what is he referring to? The first thing he's talking about is the windows. I call it the four resources of the windows of heaven. Resource number one. Windows, if there is a window right here, and it's glass, and there's a blind over it, in fact, there is a window right there, the first thing windows give you is vision. In other words, if there's a window there and the blinds are over it, if I move those blinds, God is saying, I'm going to open the windows. He says, I'm going to remove the blinders off of your eyes and give you a vision of what your life can do. To get you a vision of what your life can do. We're talking about the four resources of heaven. Number two, it says windows give you access. So now I can, once the blinds have been removed, I can now move through that window. I can now open the window and now I have access to move towards what I saw, what came across my eyes. So the second resource of heaven, first resource is vision. Second resource is access. Third resource, opportunity. Now this is the one that I really love. Because remember that passage in the New Testament where it says that faith without works is dead. So you have to do something. So once I start taking action, I have a vision. God gives me access. Now I'm moving through the glass door towards what I saw. Now God is going to create an opportunities as I move towards what he has shown me. But I have to move first. So the third resource of heaven is opportunity. And then the fourth resource of heaven is abundance. Most of the time when we want things from God, we think we want them in the finished state. In other words, we say, God, I want an oak tree. And God says, okay. And he gives you an acre. And he says, now, go plant that acre, water it, tend it, and in a few years, you'll have a small tree and by 10 years from now, you'll have a tree that supplies you with lots of acorns for you to eat. And then a few years from there, you'll have acorns and you'll have thousands and thousands and thousands of oak trees to boot. But most of us want the oak tree initially. God works after the law of growth, seed, time, harvest. 
which is one level. So we talk about the four resources of heaven. What are they? Windows give you vision. Windows give you access. Windows give you opportunity. Windows give you abundance. So that's actually the second purpose of the tides. We're going to stop right there because I don't want these videos to be too long. And we'll pick up with the purpose of the tide number three.